Are you looking to create a racy matrix in Smartsheet? Perhaps you're looking for a racy matrix template. Either way, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to be walking you through exactly how to build a racy matrix and then use it. So I'm going to be showing you how to display it on a dashboard. So what I've done is I've just created a brand new workspace just to collect and keep all of this data and everything that I create in one space. So the first thing we're going to need is a grid and we're going to call this our racy matrix. Now, at this stage, I'm just gonna run you through my recommended columns and the formatting and how we're gonna build this out. Of course, you can take this uh, a little step further, you can change some of the formatting, and I won't delve into too much detail because I do want to keep this video nice and concise, but I will be giving you the basics uh, of building a racy matrix and then how you can display it. So do make sure you continue watching if you do need to build one. So I'm gonna be showing you how to build a racy matrix with a kind of standard template. So this is what you can expect. Of course, you may need to update some of the elements. I'm gonna keep this high level uh, and very, very broad. So for instance, you will need to swap out uh, some of the specific deliverable, deliverable and task text that I put in that will serve as a placeholder. But let's not go into too much detail. Let's just get into into the building. So the first thing I would recommend is changing the primary column to deliverable slash task, okay? And we'll leave this obviously as a text num text slash number column type because that's all we can do. So that's the first column I'd recommend. The second one, I would recommend a priority column. And this time we're gonna have a drop down list. The values here will be low, medium, and high. And we're only going to restrict to list values only. Next, I would suggest a status column. And again, we're gonna be using a dropdown. So sorry about that, that's really annoying, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. So this time we want, uh, not dropdown, sorry, a status uh, column with a dropdown list. So again, restrict to list values only, just check that. And then we want to have in progress, or when I say we want to have, these are the recommended statuses I would suggest. Needs review. Approved, not started, overdue, and on hold. Of course, you could choose to have some of these, not all of them, but these are the ones that I would consider. Press OK. Now we delve into the actual racy matrix itself. If you're familiar with a racy matrix, then this would all make sense to you. But if you've never built one before, let me just briefly explain what RACI stands for. So RACI stands for responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. So the idea is that you basically map out what individual individual is kind of against each one of those. So the way I recommend that you build this out in Smartsheet is you, is you use the columns to specify the different stakeholders. So I'm going to be kind of giving you some simple uh, example ones to include, um, but you will need to probably introduce a few more. But I'm gonna be going through some very, very basic ones. I'll also put some placeholders in. But this is what you need to do for each one. So let's do this for project sponsor. We're gonna do a drop down list. We're gonna allow mo multiple values per cell. We're gonna restrict to values only. And the values are going to be R, A, C, I. And I've pre just pressed enter after typing in each letter to put it on a separate row. So we're gonna to need to do this for all of the different roles. So we need one for project manager. Again, we are going to put a drop down list. Check, check. Press OK. Let's just save this up. And what you can do is you can start to, to think about the different the kind of core areas. So this could be, you could have a, a section for the kind of project team. So we could have a project manager here. We could have a role related to the project team. We could have a, a, another another section related to, um, you know, it could be like consultants and stuff like that. So you can kind of break it out by the different sections. So you could have all the kind of project sponsor related roles after this. Uh, so if I just put a project, uh, let's put role, role, role two. And let's just put role three. So I just wanted to show you how you know we can um, 
yeah, how you how you would build this out for the different roles is obviously going to be very, very project specific. So that's where you would put them in. Now, what we can do is we can um, we will obviously need to quickly just do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm double left click and I'm just going to copy, press uh, control C on my keyboard and I'm going to go into role two and I'm going to do drop down list, check, check, and I'm going to press control V just to put it in there quicker. We've done it for project manager. We're going to do it for role three. So again, drop down list, check, check. Okay. And then let's put this one in as a consultant for now. And we're going to put a drop down list. Check, check. Okay. And then let's actually put role four. We'll put role four in. Roll four, drop down list, check, check, control V. Okay. Now, if I save this, what we've got is we've got, we could actually, before I do that, let's put in a couple of phases. So we could put phase uh, here, and then we could put deliverable slash task one. I'm gonna unbold this, control C, control V, put this as task two. I'm gonna put a new, so this would be phase one. So this is how you'd break it down via the different components of your project. So these could be project stages as well. So this could be project initiation, you know, this could be project execution, this could be project closure, you get the idea. I'm just trying to show you how this would work in theory. So I'm just gonna press Control C and I'm pressing Control V, okay? So we don't want this bolded, but we do want the headers bolded. So this would be phase two, this would be phase three, four and five. And then what we could do here is we could use this, the indent, to break it up a little bit further. Now, another option here is I've gone for the deliverables and the tasks. The other option is, or you could even add another column to the left, is you could have project. So you could have project one, project two, project three. You could even do it on three levels. You could do project, then phase, then deliverable and task. So there's plenty of options here. I'm doing it on a per project basis. This racing matrix is for a particular project, but we could, as I say, do it for a portfolio view by having projects here instead. Okay. You could also do something like this to just format it a little bit different. We could do something like this, just to kind of break it up and make it look nice and neat. Now, what we could do here after we've done this is we will then just, I'll just show you how uh, we can take it one step further. So let's just, you know, obviously this would be low. Well, well, not obviously. This is what we're going to put in for dummy data. And then the project sponsor is going to be responsible for the deliverable task one. So here you can see we've put it in. We could also, because of the options we chose, make them accountable as well. So that's one of the benefits of using this particular template. So in a racing matrix, sometimes different individuals have various different roles. And we can do that because we've enabled the ability to select them all. So let's just put some, some dummy data in just to show you how this is gonna look on our dashboard. So we've put a few things in here. I won't put role three in. Let's do it in under the consultant. So they need to be informed there. Let's just put a few more little bits in. Now, one other thing you can do, and I won't spend too much time doing this, is, sorry, I'm making a mistake here. That should be in there. Right, another thing you can do here is you can use conditional formatting to change how this all looks. And that is probably recommended. So I'd put a color coding in. So what you can do here is you can click conditional formatting and you can add some rules. So if you click add new rules, you could say if project sponsor responsible, okay, apply this format. So maybe red um, to project sponsor. We press OK. Oh, didn't select that, sorry. Select this. OK. Then every time there's an R in project sponsor, it's going to go red. Also, so what you would then do is you'd almost have like a key. So you'd have responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed down here. And then I would color code this. So you could go something like like this, then a countable could be a an orange or something like that. We could then have uh, consulted as blue as an example, 
and then we could have informed as something like a yellow or just something like that just a something that makes sense okay and then what you would need to do is you would need to go through here and i'm actually going to change this to i'm just consulted just for uh example's sake let's get rid of that and then let's just put that in there like that what you would then need to do is you would need to set up the conditional formatting uh, for each um, color for each column. So what I would then do is I would clone this rule and I would change this to the A and then I would change this to the orange. So this does require a little bit of setup. So when I go on A this time, it will go orange. OK, and then you would need to do it for this here, for the for the the other columns you've done. A little bit time consuming. The duplicate tends to be the easiest. So we would clone the rule. And in this one, we'd have to change it to project manager R. OK, and then it's already red. So if this has an R in it, then it will go red as well. Or it should have done. Maybe I didn't put that in proper. Oh, I didn't save it. Sorry. Let me quickly just clone this. So if project manager start, then apply. Sorry, that's why it didn't work. I needed to do that to make that change. Red. Oh, I've messed this up. Sorry. Let's just change this. Sorry, if this if this is A, then apply orange. Okay, so now we've got this in here and now we've got this in here. So what you're essentially doing with the conditional formatting is you're just color coding everything. So we'd have to obviously do it for, for, for consulted and informed. You need to set up four rules for each and every column. Okay, let's just, let's just do I for now. It's the last one I'll do, and then I'll show you how to get this onto the dashboard. But the reason I want to show you this is just because when I put it, pull it onto the dashboard, it you know there's a benefit in doing so, and we'll soon find that out. So let's change this to if consultant is I, apply yellow to the consultant column. Okay, perfect, excellent. What's happened to our for some reason, I'm lo losing. I'm losing my rules that I set up for. There must be project manager. R. okay. And apply this format to the project manager. Okay, okay. Save. Not quite sure how I was losing that one. I was losing a. Project Prompter is, oh dear, dear, dear. R, A, uh, <laughs> losing, losing my mind, is orange. Project Manager. Right, let's put this as A. Excellent, right, okay. I've, I've lost that rule. But you get the idea. What we're doing is we're putting in the color coding for, uh, you know, the different uh, roles. Right, let's save this. I don't want to spend any more time doing it. But you, what you want to do is color, quote, color code it accordingly. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a report. And this will enable us to bring it onto a dashboard. So here we go. We're going to call it Racing Matrix. And what we're going to do here is we are going to... First, for the source sheet, we're going to select the sheet we were just working in. We call that Racing Matrix. Press Next. Now, what we need to do is we need to take off the sheet name because we don't want that. In the first column, we would like the phase and deliverable. I'm going to remove the key in a second because we don't want that there. Then we could put in the status if we wanted or have it removed. What you can then do is you can bring in the various roles. So project sponsor, project manager and consultant. That's what we're going to do for now. We don't want to put any filter criteria on, but we could do. We could select only those with responsible. We could select only those with accountable. We could select only those where there's an entry. You get the idea. You could filter this if you wanted to. We don't want to. So I'm going to do that. Got this as saved. If I quickly just go back in here, I want to remove this out. That was for informational purposes. We don't want it in the report. Let's take that out, go in here, and it will be removed. Excellent. So now all we do, if we wanted this on a dashboard, is we would obviously go to our dashboard or create one. And we would... Add a widget, select the report that we've just built. Press OK. And here you go, we have a racy matrix, which is displayed nice and clearly on our dashboard. 
So now when anyone comes in, they can see the racing matrix, they can see what, uh, who's been assigned to what, and we can obviously make any further changes back in the underlying data sheet itself. One other thing you could probably do, which would make a bit more sense, is I would move this into the center. So what I would then do is I would select all of this and I would center it. If I hit save and go back to our dashboard, then it's been centered. So that's how to create, create a racy matrix and racy matrix template in Smartsheet. If this video is useful, please hit the like button. If you have any questions about the process, about racy matrix or any just comments in general about this video, then put them down below. And do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you head over to my channel, I've got an entire playlist on Smartsheet training. So if you're new to the tool and I want, want to learn how to get the most out of it, then be sure to check it out. With all that said, I hope you have an excellent day.